so you just got a Chromebook. It's not steep, but there is a learning curve if you're coming from Windows or Mac. It's okay. Chrome Unboxed is here to help. Look, there are tons of people like us who have spent lots of time in Chrome OS using Chromebooks and are just very familiar with all of this stuff. And so as we look up things and we write articles, it's really easy to forget there are tons of people that are just now starting to pick up Chrome OS and Chromebooks. And so we wanted to make a video for you guys. And so if you're watching this and you're someone who's been using Chrome OS for a while, this video is probably not for you. You may find something in here that you didn't know about, but likely this is gonna be more for your friend or family member who is just now getting into Chrome OS and needs a quick start guide and some, some tools to help them use their Chromebook as someone who has been using Chromebooks for six months or a year. And so we, we wanted to provide 10 very simple things that can kind of get you jump started in your overall experience. But before we get into those 10 tips, here's a freebie to get us started. NordVPN is the VPN of choice for millions of users. It is the simplest and easiest way to secure your browsing data, whether you're on a Chromebook or you're on a Windows device or a Mac or a phone or Android, iOS, any of them. All you have to do is go over to chromeunbox.com forward slash NordVPN to get started today. All right, so let's get started. Tip number one, plug in your Chromebook. Now when you unbox it, it's gonna be tempting to pull all the wrapping off, open it up and hit the power button. 99 times out of 100, that's not gonna do anything. And we know, because we've unboxed a lot of Chromebooks around here. Google, for whatever reason, I'm sure it has something to do with safety or something, sets these in such a way that when they pack them up, they need to be plugged into the outlet for at least a few seconds before they will power on and connect the battery up to the motherboard. So get it out, plug it in, probably for just a couple seconds. That will wake the device up and you can be off and running. Tip number two, you're gonna need a Google account. And I know a lot of people get really uptight whenever someone says, hey, you need to sign up for yet another thing. But you need to know that a Google account in general isn't just another thing. It's kind of the gateway to using a Chromebook to its fullest potential. And there's not really a way to use it without one. Sure, you can jump in guest mode, and that's one of the options when you go to log in. And you'll use guest mode from time to time. Somebody will need to use your Chromebook, log out, pop it into guest mode, and let them go to town. When they log out, everything they did is gone. That's great. And it's one of the great things about Chromebooks is that they are account driven, meaning all the things that you set up, all the things you download, all the things you do, all the stuff that you accumulate follows that account. And so we're talking about settings, Wi-Fi passwords, all of that stuff is logged into your personal account so that if you drop this Chromebook, lose this Chromebook, move on to another Chromebook, need to just jump into another Chromebook, you can just log in, give it a few seconds to sync up, and everything you had set up on your device will be at your disposal on this other device. A Google account is kind of the keys to the kingdom here. It's gonna give you access to Google Docs, it's gonna give you access to Gmail, to Google Calendar, to Google Photos, Google everything, basically. It's all tied to that account. So it is something that is absolutely necessary. And again, one of the cool parts about it is with all this stuff being connected to your account, you can also lend your Chromebook to other people, let them sign in with their account, all their stuff's there, it's all siloed. You can't get to it, they can't get to your stuff. It's all completely separated. And you can jump back and forth between accounts really, really quickly and really easily by logging out or just switching accounts. And so it, it brings a lot of power to the table. And so don't be afraid of signing up for that Google account. You'll need it, you'll use it, and it will make your Chromebook experience really, really great. Number three, use your ports. Chromebooks come with all kinds of ports, and some of them are gonna be USB-C only, some of them are gonna be a mix of USB-C and USB-A, you're gonna have SD card slots and headphone microphone jacks. The point is, use them, because Chrome OS takes very good advantage of these ports. Lots of stuff works with Chromebooks. You can plug all sorts of things in, so if you're even curious about whether or not it would work with your Chromebook, plug it in and see. SD cards work to offload storage and, and videos and, and footage and all that kind of stuff. And printers, you can plug them right in. Portable hard drives work really, really well. And wireless and wired keyboards and, and mice and all of these peripherals just work. Just plug it in and see. And, and you might be surprised at what will work with the ports on your Chromebook. Number four, getting around your settings. Now, Chrome OS is pretty simplified as an operating system, but there still are a lot of settings to choose from. So if you go down to the system tray and click where the clock is and then hit your gear icon, you're gonna see a long list of settings. And to be honest with you, even after years of using these, 
I couldn't even tell you exactly where all the things are that I go and tweak because I never actually navigate straight to them. I go straight to the search bar, type what I'm looking for, it highlights it, I go there and change it. So whether you're looking for passwords or you're gonna change something on your keyboard or whatever setting it is you're looking for, font sizes, all that kind of stuff, just start typing right up there in that search bar, find what you're looking for and get right to it. It's actually insanely simple. But if you don't use that search bar, the settings can be a little bit overwhelming. Number five, how to extend your display. For some of you getting this device, you're gonna be wanting to get some work done on it and be productive. And luckily, Chrome OS does a great job at extending displays. All you gotta do if you've got HDMI on your particular Chromebook is hook an HDMI cable into the Chromebook and into the display you wanna to go to, whether it's a monitor or a TV. Chrome OS will recognize it. Some of you are only gonna have USB Type-C. Rest assured, USB Type-C on Chromebooks always has a display out function. You just need an adapter to do that. You can find them on Amazon. We'll link one in the description below. But once you've got it hooked up, there's gonna be a notification that will pop up. You click on that notification, it's gonna take you right to the spot in your settings where you actually get to arrange how those screens uh, are aligned. And so you wanna align them basically the way that you have them physically. Like I like my monitor up here with my actual Chromebook beneath it. I drag it in that way. That way, once you've done that, the mouse cursor can go from screen to screen exactly as you would expect, as if they're exactly there in physical space. And so the setup is super, super easy. If you don't quite get everything you want, maybe you wanna change resolution on one of the monitors or something like that, you need to get back. Again, go back to the earlier tip on the settings, open that settings panel up, type in display, you'll see it right there. Click in and you can change those things as you see fit. On to number six. That's keyboard shortcuts. You're gonna notice right out of the box that if you've not used a Chrome OS device before, the keyboard looks a little bit different and that top row function keys, they do kind of what you expect, you know, forward, back, refresh, escape, that kind of stuff is pretty straightforward. There are a couple function keys up there. There's one that looks kind of like a box, you hit it, it's actually gonna take whatever you're looking at and go full screen and the one next to it that looks like three boxes will actually go into an overview mode and we're gonna talk about that mode here in just a second with the trackpad. But I'm not really talking about the stuff that's right there in your face on the keyboard. I'm talking about keyboard shortcuts, things where you can hit a combination of keys and do different stuff. And Chrome OS is kind of loaded up with them. There's lots and lots of different things. But simple stuff like uh, copy and paste, for instance, you know, Control V, Control C, Control X work exactly like you would expect them to. Those are the ones I use a lot. Some people look for the delete button, not the backspace. Alt backspace gives you a delete button, but you can see every single one of these keyboard shortcuts if you hit Control Alt Shift and the question mark. And so once you do that, it's gonna bring up a searchable database of every shortcut that you can access on your keyboard. Number seven, navigating your trackpad. Google's done a really good job with Chromebooks across the board, regardless if they're cheap or they're really expensive, of making good trackpads a necessity. And because of that, all the gestures work on all Chromebooks. And so I wanna talk through a couple of those gestures that are really, really helpful in day-to-day -day use. So we'll talk about one finger gestures first, which is basically just pointing, but you do have the option of choosing in your settings whether you want to be able to tap to click or actually click the trackpad down to click. Moving on to two fingers, if you want a right click or a context menu to come up, you can tap or click with two fingers onto the trackpad and get that. And then if you want to scroll a page or scroll up and down anything, whether you're in an app or whatever, you want to move the content up and down, two finger scroll moves that content up and down. Moving on to three finger gestures, you can swipe up or down depending on which way you've got that set in your settings on your trackpad with three fingers and get an overview mode to see all of your open windows. And then you can swipe left and right with three fingers on your trackpad if you have multiple tabs open on any single instance of Chrome and move between those tabs quickly. And for me, one of my favorite uh, gestures on Chromebooks in general, and when I go to Windows or Mac or something else, I sorely miss that feature. The last one I wanna mention is three finger click to close. So if you're clicked onto or hovering over a tab, three finger click can close that tab where you don't have to go hunting for the little X button there. But the gestures in general always work and they work really fluidly and they work really well. And Google has done a good job of making sure that that experience is the same regardless if you paid $150 for your Chromebook or a thousand. Number eight, navigating the tablet UI. So as of Chrome OS 70 that came out a few months ago, 
Google really overhauled the entire tablet interface. So if you've got a Chrome OS tablet or a convertible, the minute you put it into tablet mode, you're gonna notice some things have changed. And one of those is the desktop kind of gets replaced by the app drawer. And the app drawer can be swiped through. You pick an app and open it up and exactly as you would expect to. Once it's open, another cool trick you can do is to go between another app is just swipe right up from the bottom. The app tray will kind of take over the page again. You can choose something. If you choose to back out of that, swipe back down, you're right back into your app. If you swipe down from the top, you're met with a couple options. You can move the app over into side-by-side -side mode so you can kind of do a split screen multitask and then choose another app to open there. Or you can drop it down into the overview mode where you see all of your open windows and from there flick up any of those or hit the X in the corner to close those apps out. And then if you just choose one of those apps in that overview mode, you'll see that app full screen again. And again, from that spot, you can kind of move around using these gestures in any way you see fit. Number nine, leveraging Android and Linux on your device. Now you may have noticed already there's a little Play Store icon either down on your shelf or in your app tray. And if you choose and you would like to leverage Android apps on your device, click that button, the Play Store will kind of get set up and you'll have access to most of the Play Store and you can download and try apps and some of them are great and some of them just are not formatted for the big screen. But you can try and, and see what you like. If you don't like it, you can go into settings, you can go to the Play Store settings and just turn the whole thing off. It's kind of up to you. And Linux is the same way too. If you're not familiar with a terminal and you don't really know what to do with Linux, just leave it turned off for right now. But if you do and you want to experiment and you want to get in there and, and mess around with some of the things there, you can actually just go to settings again, go to the Linux section, flip it on and it will go through an installation process and then you'll have a terminal where you can start installing things uh, via the terminal just like you would on any other Linux device. And so if you have no idea what I mean when I say a terminal, again, probably a good idea to let that one rest. And for our final tip, tip number 10, power wash your Chromebook. And I don't necessarily mean power wash it right now, especially if you're watching this video on it. But in general, if anything goes wrong or anything's out of place or you've got too much junk installed or you just want a fresh start or you want to hand it off to somebody or you need to return your device, the power wash is the way to go. It's very simple to get to. Go to your settings, search power wash. It's the only thing that's going to come up. Click it, agree to the yes, I want to power wash my device. And within just a couple minutes, this thing is going to be back to factory settings. It's not like resetting uh, other devices like Windows or Mac devices where it takes time and, and you got to just sit there and wait on it. it. It really, really is a very, very quick and painless experience. And so if you run into any problems whatsoever, a power wash is the way to go. And since everything is hooked up to your Google account, the minute you power wash it and you need to sign back in, all of your stuff's gonna be there again. It's all gonna be set up. It's all gonna be laid out exactly the way that you left it. And so it's one of the beauties of using a Chromebook in general. All right guys, so that's it. Those are our top 10 tips getting started for new Chromebook users. And sure, there's plenty of other ones out there that we could talk about. And if there are some tips that you think, hey, this is really important for new Chromebook users to see, hit us up in the comments down below. And if there's enough of them, we might make another one of these videos. But for right now, that's it for this one. If you liked it, Hit that thumbs up button, subscribe down below, and until next time, we'll see you.